the way up. Perfect. Hi friends. I am Sandeep and we are here for another class of magic with numbers. That's mathematics. And today I will tell you a secret. I want to be super rich. <laughs> Who doesn't? All of us want to be super rich and for me to get rich, I am learning to trade stocks. Now trading stocks is not as easy as it sounds, you know. It requires a lot of statistical understanding to understand statistics. Look at this. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this looks confusing. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Today we will learn all about this type of information which is called statistics. By understanding statistics, we will be able to analyze and represent data in a more efficient way. Come on, let's have some fun while I make some money. What in the world will I gain from learning statistics? Well, one big benefit of understanding these lines and graphs is that you may gain the capacity to get rich and famous. Okay, on a serious note, we see so many of these statistics in our daily lives. Why don't we just open the newspaper and see for yourself? Let me give you some examples that you may recognize. The population count of the people, comparison between countries on basis of their wealth, and even the medal tally in the Olympic Games. So now you can see that understanding statistics actually makes us more knowledgeable and improves our understanding of live events. Isn't that great? Well, to start off, let me share with you the history of statistics. Here we go. The word statistics is derived from the Latin word status or the Italian word stata. Have you noticed the name of this chapter? Statistics. Well, when an S is added to statistic, it becomes the name of an entire branch of mathematics. Without an S, it means the data we have at hand. Numbers that have been collected in a systematic manner. Now, look at this. So here we have different forms of representation of data. Some of them are in the form of bar graphs pie charts and line graphs. Did you notice that they all represent data in different ways? Interesting, isn't it? Oh. What? <laughs> You're wondering what I'm doing? I'll tell you. Well, I'm actually entering the marks scored by 15 students in their mathematics test. Look at the marks they have obtained. I can spot the highest as well as the lowest mark. To find these two scores, it took some time, right? Well, that is because the numbers are not written in any particular order. This kind of data is called raw or ungrouped data. If we arrange this data in ascending or descending manner, we will be able to see a pattern more clearly. For a very large set of data, this kind of an arrangement is not practical due to time constraints. We have to figure out a way to arrange this large data so that we can work with it easily. One way of doing that is to divide these large set of data into broad classes, just like this. We can classify numbers like 11, 15 and 13 into a class 7 to 18. We can have another class from 19 to 30 where we can put the numbers 25, 27 and 19. Here we can see how classes can help sort data. Now we can easily see how the students did in an English test out of 100 marks and we can easily spot the highest and lowest marks. 
here we have a neat looking table see how beautifully we have slotted the numbers now look at this data set in a botany experiment 20 leaves were measured and the results are as follows let us try and sort the numbers here too We first locate the lowest and then the highest number in our data set. We can now create classes to slot the numbers into. But all the classes have to be of equal length. Like we cannot have 0 to 20 and then 10 to 15. No, 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 no. It has to be 21 to 30, 31 to 40 and so on. So here we have our neat classes now let us fill in the numbers hmm while making a table like this we can replace writing the actual numbers with a sign so if there are four numbers belonging to that class then we can write like this for the fifth number we strike out like this look we have seven such numbers belonging to the class 31 to 40 and that is shown by one bundle and two lines. This number 7 is known as the frequency of the class. Great going! In most cases of managing data and creating a table is possible if we have a smaller class length like 10 to 15. The following table shows the frequency table for the botany experiment. If we add up the frequencies of all the classes we should get back the number of scores in the data. Now it is very easy to spot the highest score and the lowest score by simply looking at the table. That is, the highest is 53 and the lowest is 22. The difference between them gives us the range of the data. The range is the highest minus the lowest. So the range here is 53 minus 22 which is 31. We can easily calculate the number of classes we should create by using the range of the data. Here the formula is the range of the data divided by the length of the class interval. In that case that is 9. The length of the class interval is calculated as the difference between the upper and the lower limits of the classes. In a frequency table we have classes. In this case it is 21 to 30 and 31 to 40 etc. There are some situations where we have data on temperatures and we have to deal with the values such as uh, 20.6 degrees or 30.8 degrees. Here the problem arises that is in which class should we put this kind of data. So to make things easier we make class continuous. <laughs> now I'm sure you're wondering what a continuous class means. Well, a continuous means having a seamless class representation, then every item in the data belongs to one particular class and no one feels left out. So we create boundaries from the existing class limits. Now the next step is to understand how are boundaries created. Well, we simply find the average of the upper and the lower limit for two consecutive classes. So in this case, let's take two consecutive classes 21 to 30 and 31 to 40. The upper limit of the first class is 30 and the lower limit of the second class is 31. The average of 30 and 31 is 30.5. So we have class boundaries like 30.5 to 40.5. And then again from 40.5 to 50.5. We repeat this for all the classes and then we get a new set of class boundaries and the frequency table changes to frequency distribution. <laughs>